Weapons of warfare. <clears throat> That's where we're going. I know, I, as I said earlier, I realized that I should have been doing <laughs> something to do with the 4th of July. And, well, well I still yeah. believe this is where we are, even, even on the 4th of July. So I didn't change it. I just kept going with it. Yes. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, again, once again, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would take the speaker out of the way and that the Holy Spirit would come through and speak to each life that is here and to each life that will turn um, this message on in, in uh, YouTube or wherever it is that they go to listen to it on social media. I thank you, Father God, for, for the blessing of, and the honor and the privilege to be able to stand before these people and bring this message. And I thank you that you are leading it in Jesus' name. Weapons of warfare. And the first one is going to be on the Holy Spirit. He is our helper. He's our helper all the time, even when we don't know it. Second Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10, verses 3 through 4 are where we're going to go. And again, I'm sorry we don't have a projector set up to put put anything up but uh, if you can try to follow along please do we are here I'm doing this from the New Living Translation I think um, I can't I'm sorry I didn't mark that out isn't that funny huh maybe not it might be from uh, NIV we are human but we don't wage war as humans do it's a New Living Translation, I do believe. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. This is what we do. This is what we should be doing. We don't wage with flesh and blood. We wage war against spiritual forces. Amen. Since last we met, God has won a major victory in our country. And since the federal courts turned over Roe versus Wade, correcting a major error in our legal system and turning us back to the foundation of our Constitution, hallelujah, at least 26 states, if not more, in our union have followed suit and now recognize the seed planted in a woman's womb as being a person with their own inalienable rights to life as well. This is a huge victory. Praise God for it. Perhaps now the Lord will turn this nation around as the body of Christ rises up in a spirit of repentance. Perhaps now he will be merciful as so many are wielding their own weapons of warfare, prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And oh, he is listening. Oh, our God is moving. These are truly exciting and extraordinary times. Wouldn't you agree? Mm. I pray each and every one of us are now recognizing how close we are to the Lord's appearing. And that we, together with all believers in Christ, are fully joining in this fight as well. If we aren't, there's something wrong. The time for complacence is over. No longer can we be on the fence. Now the church is dividing in. As I heard the other day from a pastor out of California. Name is Pastor Jack Hibb. Look him up. He's, he's, he's a great, great preacher. He says that is not always a bad thing. He also shared about deception coming to light and the righteous bride coming forth. Praise God, isn't that what we've been sharing for the last several weeks, right? For the last few months. And the Lord gave me a vision and an interpretation. The righteous bride is coming out. I'd say it's about time. And as we have shared many times over the last several weeks during this study on spiritual warfare, we do not fight against physical enemies. No one being repetitive, but it's important. We do not fight against our neighbor. We do not fight against our relatives. 
We do not fight against our brothers, our sisters, our children, our mothers, our fathers. We do not fight against our bosses. We do not fight against strangers. We do not fight against that person who drives recklessly beside us on the road. We do not. We do not fight against anything or anyone in the flesh. We got to get that. What we fight against are found within the spiritual realm. It stands to reason that if we are already now with Jesus in the kingdom of heaven, right? This is what the word of God says, right? We are already there. Then we must also be fighting now against the spiritual forces in high places that war against us. Amen. They do so with, the, with such a degree and with the intent of destroying our walk with Jesus in order to keep us from growing and developing in our relationship with God. To keep us distracted from the work set before us, which is to make disciples of Jesus, our Messiah. As a reminder, we need to have a good and clear understanding of who we are in Christ. We need to know our identity, right? <clears throat> We need to know who our adversaries are and exactly what the battlegrounds are on which we fight. We've gone through these things. If we don't know them, how can we truly stand and fight against our enemy? How can we keep from just constantly treading water and <laughs> going backwards and feeling like we're never getting anywhere? Right? These concepts are of utmost importance so we may know how to fight as the scriptures say. Having done all to stand. And how do we stand? We stand in faith. Not by our own strength. By faith. As we daily face spiritual enemies in high places, and make no mistakes, that is exactly what is happening. We also need to remember that we have spiritual weapons of warfare readily available and at hand. Again, I tell you, our weapons are not physical in nature, but spiritual. These weapons are mighty through God. However, in order for these weapons to be truly effective, they must first be understood, and then they must be wielded. They must be used. How often do you find yourself going through the same struggle over and over and over and over and over again, and you can't seem to stop it? Well, let me ask you a question. Are you praying? Are you learning the word of God and then practicing it and using it in your prayer life? Are you praising God? Are you singing praises to God? Even in difficult moments, in difficult situations, even when we lose our children, are we praising God anyway? That's what we have to do. It doesn't look like anything on this earth. It is radically different. It is radically different. Amen. These weapons that help us to fight against spiritual warfare are what we're going to be going through in the next few weeks. The first one being the Holy Spirit, our helper. The second, the full armor of God. The third, the name of Jesus. The fourth will be praise. Fifth, God's faithfulness. That is our testimony. What God has done for us. Okay, God's faithfulness. Some of us in this room have gone through some pretty difficult things and God has been faithful. He has taken you through it. Now you're on the other side of it. Now what are you going to do? This week we will discuss our advocate, our counselor, our comforter, our very present help in time of trouble, the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26.
But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Who's speaking? Say it out loud. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus is speaking. And this is in the NIV. As Jesus promised in the word, God the Father has not left us on our own to fight in this world. He's not left us alone. And sometimes we feel like we are, don't we? I'm sure that there are people in this room can, can relate to that. Sometimes you just feel like you're punting and you're just struggling by yourself. But God has not left us alone. He has not left us as orphans. He has sent his Holy Spirit to help us fight our battles here on this earth and against our mortal enemy, Satan, in the spiritual realm. Let me tell you something. Satan is very real. If you don't know that, you should. 1 John chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. <clears throat> but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. As we are God's children, dearly loved, and his spirit dwells within us, we can be assured that he is greater in us than our enemy in the world. He is our helper. He is our strength. He is our advocate. And I want you to really get this. It says, you have overcome them. Who's them? Who have you overcome? Spirit of Antichrist, right? Any spirit that will not acknowledge Jesus Christ. You, children of God, have overcome. Already. A concept that is so hard to understand. If I'm still struggling with X, Y, and Z, how is it possible that I've already overcome? Through faith. Through believing. In the name of Jesus, I have overcome. In the name of Jesus, I will not use foul language. I have overcome. In the name of Jesus, I will not give in to this voice that keeps telling me I need to have this or I need to have that. I need to spend money on things I can't afford. Or I need to have a drink. Or I need to... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying having any alcohol at all is a bad thing. I'm not saying that. But there are people who cannot drink. And there are people who cannot take things within themselves because they have addictive, they have a, an addictive bent. So we have to be super careful. Don't take certain things into your body. Don't do certain things. But how can you do that in and of your own strength? You can't. You can't. But the word says you already have through the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Through God, through faith. Amen? Am I, am I getting through? Am I making sense? So, you have overcome them already. That speaks to having already, having been accomplished. Because greater is he who is in us. Amen? To help us understand a bit more about our great helper, I want to go over the divine attributes of the Holy Spirit of God. And as I told you, you'll find them this, the scriptures that you can go through on your own time. You don't need to open up through them now because there's so many. Um, but study them on your own time. Please go through them and learn who is the Holy Spirit. What are his attributes? Acts 5 says he's called God. Genesis 1, Judges 3 says he's called the Spirit of God. Acts 28, 2 Corinthians 6, Hebrews 3 says he's considered 
God. Matthew 3, Matthew 28, 1 Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 13, Ephesians 2, 4, 1 Peter 1. These all say he is equal to God the Father and the Son. He is equal to them. Hebrews 9, 14 says he is eternal. That means he's always been. He always will be. Romans 8 says he's self-existent. Doesn't use that language. But when you read Romans 8, chapter 2, you can glean what it's saying. He is life. And he is the giver of life. Psalms 139, 7 through 8 He's omnipresent. That's everywhere at the same time. But I will even go on to say that he's even outside of time. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, John 14 and 16 says he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. You cannot hide from him. You may think you're doing things in secret, but you're not. He sees all. He knows all. <clears throat> Zechariah 12 says he's sovereign. He is supreme ruler of all. 2 Peter 1.21 says that, I'm sorry, Genesis 1, 1 through 2 says he was involved with creation. In fact, he still is. <laughs> Think about how things continue to evolve. Things are continuing to be discovered. He still is. He said, be made. And it's still happening. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.21 says, he enabled the writing of the Bible. He inspires it. He inspired the word of God. He inspired the letters. He inspired it from soup to nuts, to coin a phrase. <coughs> Second Corinthians 4 lets us know that he helps us to recognize the glory of God. How many of you understand that you can sit here and say that <coughs> God is glorious and not really? And not really believe it. And not really know what you're saying. Sure, you can speak those words out, but that doesn't make it true. It's only by the Holy Spirit that you can truthfully say, God is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And it's only through the Holy Spirit you can see the Shekinah glory of God. Think about the shepherds on the night that Jesus was born. That kind of glory. The only way I can picture it in my head is to think about the Aurora Borealis. Do you remember many years ago we had we had that come all the way down here we were able to see yes. the Aurora. It was beautiful. That's just a mere, mere pittance of the Shekinah glory of God. Amen? Mm. We will see that one day. Jason, you will see that one day. His glory. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 makes it clear that he enables us to call upon Jesus as Lord. We can't we can't fully mean it without the Holy Spirit. Amen. They just become words. We know that there's false people, false teachers, false prophets, all of this stuff. They're all out there and they proclaim his glory. But they don't really know it and they don't really believe it and they don't really understand it. Amen. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is our primary weapon of warfare. He is both our offensive and defensive line. He goes before and he goes behind. 
The Holy Spirit of God works with us in two key areas. One, as we've been sharing, is as our helper. The one who will show up when we need him. He will guide us into all truth. And he will even give us the words to say to fight our adversary. He will. And he will bring to remembrance scriptures that we can say to rebuke the enemy. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Thank goodness for that, because as I've told you before, <laughs> when you suffer from a frontal lobe head injury, you have a, a difficult time with memorization. Now, God can heal that, and if God chooses to heal that, he will. But God sometimes will allow us to have certain thorns in our flesh that we have to struggle with. But I know, because I have experienced over the years, that when I need it, he brings up the word. To speak into any situation I'm dealing with. Or I'm helping another with. Amen. He will guide us into all truth. He will even give us the words to say to fight our adversary. This is the truth. And the other area is as our power source. Mm. We can plainly see his activity in both of these areas throughout the Old and New Testaments. With the people of Israel, as we look through the historical annals of time, we can see how he's used both these, these areas to work in humanity. Um, <clears throat> we can see how he's worked with his people Israel through the prophets and in the life of Jesus and his apostles and subsequently all true followers. He has not, does not, and will not abandon his children, those he has chosen and called to salvation. He is a prayer away, even and perhaps especially to the one who cannot find the words. As our helper, he leads us. He guides us. Let's look at Romans 8. Verse 26. Now I'm choosing to read through the complete Jewish Bible here. That's the version I chose. Romans 8, 26. It's similarly, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we don't know how to pray the way we should. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Sometimes I find myself praying very self-centered prayers. <laughs> and other times I don't know what to say. But the Spirit, it goes on to say, the Spirit himself pleads on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. Sometimes there aren't any words. So when does he help us? When we are weak. When we don't even know what to pray. When we don't know what to say. His spirit is right there giving us all we need. All we have to do is surrender our control. And, well, make a choice to truly believe. Do you understand that? Faith is an action word. It's something we do. It's not something we feel. So we make a choice to believe. John 16, 13 through 14. And here I'm reading the NIV. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you into all the truth. His, um, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Who is, who is me here? 
Jesus. So who makes it known to the Holy Spirit? What we need to know? Jesus. How does he know what we need? Because he listens only to what Jesus, that is God the Son, tells him. And will only impart what Jesus tells him to make known to us. I listened to a really great, I told you about him earlier, Jack, Jack, um, Pastor Jack Hibbs is his name. And you know, I'll tell you what, you know that when the Holy Spirit is leading, you know that when the Holy Spirit is truly leading in the body, when people from different parts of the world are preaching the same truths. Pastor John has a gift of prophecy. And Pastor John spoke a word, and he's done this more than once now, that God is giving us another chapter. Roe versus Wade. I don't mean to harp on something that maybe, maybe, I don't know. Is there anybody here that's offended by all of that? Hope not. I hope not. But if you are, you might want to, might want to find out what really needs to be going on here. Um, I lost my train of thought. Roll, roll me away. Yeah. Where was I going? God, God giving America another chance. Yeah. The, another I believe chapter. the turning of all of that is another chapter. Is that chapter? That's that's what's starting. It's starting another chapter, and the and the if, if the people of God will continue to seek after the Lord and seek his face and really pray hard, just as we have been for the last several months about this whole thing, God is going to hear and God is going to turn things around. God is still the captain of the ship. His blessing has been lifted. Because of the choices and the sinfulness of the people of this nation. But God will turn it around if we will seek him. Amen. Amen. My point in all of that is that this, this pastor was in agreement with what the Holy Spirit spoke through John. And he's from another part of the country, <laughs> you know? I find that so cool. And I listen to so many different preachers out there, and we're all talking about similar things. And we're all standing on the truth of the Word of God. All of the truth. Not some of the truth, but all of it. And I was sharing with somebody this morning, listen, I don't, I do not preach to itching ears. I don't preach to please itching ears. I preach the word. Now, I may not do it in the depth that maybe some other person has done it because of his theological training. But through the Holy Spirit, I'm given understanding and I'm sharing it. And I'm standing on the fullness of God's word. And that's what we need to do. And that's what we as a nation need to get back to. The foundation of our faith. Next, he is as our power source. The Holy Spirit empowers us to bear witness of Jesus locally and even to the ends of the earth. Amen. Acts 1.8. New Living Translation I'm going to read from this time. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let me ask you a question. Was it possible for Paul to go and preach the good news to the ends of the earth? Well, if God wanted him to, he would have, yeah. So it stands to reason then it isn't just for the apostles to spread the word, right? Amen. It's for all of us. We all have to do it. And he will empower us to do it. 
God puts somebody on your heart that you've never shared Jesus with before. And you're a little bit like, you got this like eh thing going on inside your stomach. And you're like, I really want to tell this person about the Lord, but they really intimidate me. I promise you, God will empower you. If you take that step forth towards that person, he's going to give you the words that you need. Amen. Amen. And you're going to touch that life. And if that life is not called to salvation, they won't receive it. But the Holy Spirit will still empower you. Yes. <clears throat> he teaches us to give testimony about Jesus. He teaches us. He gives us understanding. Look, the word of God can be hard to understand. If you're a novice, you're new at it, you don't understand it, maybe you, maybe you only pick it up when you come to church. Right? <laughs> because it's hard for you to understand, Right? But if you want to understand it and you're faithful to pick it up and you're faithful to read it, the Holy Spirit is going to give you understanding. Amen. And as he changes your thoughts and your minds as you're reading it and you're taking in, he changes the way you think about the world. He changes the way you think about your neighbor. It's a renewal of your mind. The word of God has the power to do that through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to read this again. He teaches us to give testimony about Jesus, about his salvation, about his good news, about his coming again, about his, he's coming again, Amen. about his people. And he leads us to help those he has called, even in the darkest of places, even those facing persecution and martyrdom. He also empowers us to walk through those dark places. He also empowers us to prophesy about what is to come. Now listen, I want us to consider the word power from this verse. This is what the Holy Spirit imparts to every believer who's truly following. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there's a distinction. A person can say, I believe, but not really follow. Okay? So the Holy Spirit imparts power to every following believer. The word power in this verse came from the Greek word dunamis. Dunamis. Now I want you to think about that word for a minute. What does that sound like? An English word that dynamo. we have. Huh? Dynamo. Dynamo or dynamite? Yeah. Dynamite. That's where the word dynamite comes from. And dynamo too, which is that's a powerful thing, right? All right. Think about the explosive impact and power of dynamite. It is so powerful, it obliterates rock. It changes it into dust. It changes the scenery before us. It is destructive, but also creative if used with finesse. Now, use that as an illustration for the power of the Holy Spirit in us. What can he do? The Holy Spirit gives us such power. We can tear down. Think about Ananias and Sapphira, right? The ones who lied. Both lives were utterly destroyed at the command of Peter. Peter said, you're going to die. And they died. Why? Why? Because they lied. They lied to the Holy Spirit. How can you lie to the Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit revealed it to Peter. And Peter, the, with righteous indignation, in the power of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, spoke the word that they were about to die and it happened. But I also want us to consider that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can build up. Right? 
Our words can create strength and beauty, love within the lives of others we share Christ with, and can bring healing from brokenness. And even through the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, healing of the body, healing of sickness. Amen. Mm. Now consider the word evolve. Think of the popular song, So Will I. We love to sing that song, So Will I. It's about God's creative work. How the very word spoken by God caused billions of stars, planets, moons, animals, humans, aquatic life to be. Think of the words peace and be still. Our Savior spoke to the, word, to the wind and the waves. That stormy night, as they were crossing the lake, he spoke to them, and they were quieted. And Peter walked on water at the Lord's command, that single word, come. This is the power we, as believers, have. This is what we have to use to fight against our enemies. But for many, the problem is we don't do not fully, we do not really believe it. I know sometimes I struggle with faith. I'll be real with you. I sometimes struggle. But I'll tell you what, when I feel the power of the Holy Spirit come on me, and I know what I need to do, and I know who I need to pray for, I know he's going to do it. Because it's not me. <clears throat> Let us change that. Let us go from not believing to fully believing in the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Here is the truth of the matter. If we speak the word, ask for help, the Holy Spirit will come to our aid as God promised. I am coming to a close here. We are never on our own and should never believe we are alone when the enemy presses in hard. And I know he will. And for some of us, he is. He will try to destroy your faith, your understanding, to fill you with doubt and fear. But I can assure you, harder still, Will our helper, the Holy Spirit, press in and fight for us as we ask, seek, and knock? And next week we're going to go over the full armor of God, our very own personalized defensive weaponry. I hope to see you then. In closing, happy 4th of July to each and every one of you. Let us never forget freedom comes at a price. That our God loves our nation and may we continually be in prayer for America and for all in leadership over us. Let us not be like those people who think we should never pray for those in leadership and authority over us. Let us not be like them. We have to. Scripture says to. And may we continually uh, off, be offering up our thanks and our prayers to the one true and triune God who alone keeps us free in these extraordinary times. God forgive us, God help us to come back to you, and God bless America, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we worship you, we praise you, as we come together to um, sing a couple of more songs. Lord, we're just reminded of your love for us as we see people out in in droves just traveling on the road and it's taking so long just to get anywhere father we know the reasons they've come up here are to just party and have a great time to distract our minds so we don't think about what's going on in our world but father we need to we need to be on our face before you we need to remember Freedom is not free. And we thank you, Lord, 
that you have given us that independence. I pray, Lord, that we will not lose it. I pray, Lord, that we will continue to humble ourselves before you. I pray, Lord, that the righteous bride will truly just continually seek, ask, seek, and knock. I praise you, Lord, and we love you. And we, we just magnify your name and all that you are doing. And we look forward to what is to come. In Jesus' name, amen.